All right, man. Hey, guys. Thank you guys for tuning in again for another Victims to Victors podcast where we speak about our trials, um, our trials, storms, and tribulations, but also how we overcame. We can't just sit in the pain. We can't just sit in the storms. We got to learn how to overcome and become victorious in our life. Today, we have a Canadian legend. It's a world champion, man. Like when I when I was coming up, I was um, started doing sambo and stuff. I heard of um, Grant Brothers, and I heard of this guy up north, Fitz the Whip, and I was like, "Who is this guy?" And then I, I, I the more I, I grew and grew, I was like, "Dang, okay, this, this is this is this is not just some regular guy. This is some this is somebody serious, especially here in Canada." So, sir, Fitz the Whip, how you doing? I'm doing great, Bryce. Thanks for having me on. Um, you know, it's an honor to be uh, to be on here. Most definitely. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So, um, like I said, you are from Canada, but wh- wh- what part of Canada you bo- born and raised? No, no. Actually, I, I was born in Trinidad and Tobago. That's right. Yes, yes, yes. And, and then, uh, then I came up to Canada when I was uh, like five years old, Dog. and I've been up here ever since. So you, you dang near Canadian, but you got a little spice and flavor in you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, little, little some some. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Not forget, not forget my roots. I won't forget the roots, man. It, it gives us who we are. You know what I mean? It really gives us our identity. Like not just like I'm Canadian, call it a day because that's what it says on my passport. But it, it really gives us something else to hold on to. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it, you know, it's like it's like hope. You know, if you have a little hope, you have something to hold on to. You know, you're not you're not going to give up. You know, you're going to keep going at it to make it happen, right? Most definitely, most definitely. So, um, what, what um, what um, age did you get into um boxing? Actually, I started boxing at the age of uh, eight. Okay, so, so just try. Yeah, I started at the age of eight. Uh, my oldest brother uh, was getting picked on at school as a young kid, and so he came home and. My dad said, you know, I got to get you guys and learn how to defend yourself. So he brought us into boxing uh, at the police station. And, um, you know, ironically, that's the same way Muhammad Ali, Muhammad Ali started boxing because he went to the police station as well. His bike got stolen. He went to the police station. The sergeant there, the police sergeant taught him how to box. And that's where we learned how to box too, from the police sergeant. From the police sergeant, huh? Yeah. So, so it was, it was, it was not like the, was it the dynamic that we have today in the sense of like the racing racism going on like you know cops are going out black guys so like hey stay away from them but it seems like you were pretty like open to go to the cops and stuff and learn to box yeah you know it it was great because um that's where uh you know that's where the um you know the uh the boxing was being taught but no there was uh there's a police sergeant hook mccomb who uh taught the uh taught the boxing on the police station there and you know, it was great to be able to to interact with them and, and to learn that way, right? Knowing mm-hmm. that they were giving back to the community, helping you, you know, because through boxing, I've learned my life lessons, life skills. <laughs> and uh, it's a, a great thing that, that it gives me just in life in general. Most definitely, most definitely. So when if you were, you know, next, next beside me in um, grade 10, if we were sitting beside each other in grade 10 English class, what would be you? Who would you be? Would you be the ladies guy? Would you be like the hardcore jock? Or would you be the the guy in the books? Who who would you be? Grade ten. Grade ten. I was I was more uh, more the guy who was uh, focused on his on his sport. So I was more you know I was more the wrestler wrestling at that time uh, through high school, and that was me. That was where my my passion was. I just um I was just, just focused more on that stuff. I didn't really didn't really take that time to go to movies per se or hang out with my friends that much. I was more focused on, on my athletics and getting through that as a person at that point in time. You, you see when I, I've, I've watched um, like a lot of guys coming up and like, in regardless of what sport you're in, when you are at that, those primitive ages, like junior high and high school, if you're going to the league or, you know, the professional ranks, there's a good chance you're going to be, in the in the in the on the hitting the speed bag you know double end bag or you know shooting your hoops your threes you know whatever whatever it is from then it's not like i'm going to the parties i'm going to the girls house i'm going to the movies like of course there's times for that but, but yeah. yeah for the most part it's focused on our craft essentially yeah no you have to be because you know the thing is um you know you see a lot of people and 
like I, I've come across a lot of good athletes, a lot of good boxers um, that I grew up with mm. uh, in the city here. And they were more skilled than I was and they were better than I was. Mm. But I just dedicated myself and worked harder at what I was doing in order to uh, achieve and push through to, to where I am today. You know, it's like um, Emmett Smith said, you know what, um, all men are born equal. equal. All men are created equal. Yep. Some work harder in preseason. That's, you know, that's not. That. No, you know, and, and I think back to that, like, you know, I have four of the brothers. We have five boys. We were all boxers. Mm. And I was the one who came through with six professional championship belts, a world champion uh, in the family. And, mm. and I keep, you know, I, sometimes I'll sit back and I'll say, Lord, why did you choose me to be the one to to come through with all, you know, with all the success, with all these mm. belts? And I look back at my career and I, I work so hard. Like there are times where, you know, I would be, I'd be getting ready for a fight. I spent two months training for a fight in Las Vegas. And then they tell me that the fight's canceled. So I work for two months and they say, I'm not getting paid now. So uh, your average guy's going to say, your average guy's going to say, I'm not doing this no more. <laughs> you know, I'm, of course. I'm leaving it. Of course, right. Of course. Myself. I said, you know what? I said, I want this. I'm going to work through it and I'm going to keep going because I want to get to a certain stage in my, in my career. And that's what I did. And, and see, like when when I when I think of it, is like when we come to the point, it's like why me, why God me, but it's those that put in that work, those that diligently seek Him, those that put in that time, put in those reps, you know, you know, doing the road work is all a part of it. And at the end of the day, if you don't put in those fundamental steps, right? Like I, I was training at Grant Brothers, for, you, you know, Grant Brothers. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Howard yeah. Notice. So I was um, working with um, RJ there, RG, and oh, guy, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. and um, he was like, "Hey, man, you got to put in that. You got to get on the road. You got to run. You got to run." I'm, I'm like 260 at the time. It was probably like 250. Yeah, my mama didn't build me to run. Okay, <laughs> like you know, I, I'm gonna stand <laughs> in that one point, and we're gonna go from here. But he's like, "Run, <laughs> run, run!" I'm like, but at those in those times, it's like the only time I'm running. If there's some flashing lights behind me or like, that's it. Like there's a dog chasing me. Like other than that, I ain't running. That's not happening. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, yeah. when you're going to put that time in, that's when you're going to see your, your skills, your endurance, your, your character push forward. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Because it, it, and you know, it is, it's character building. I mean, it's like, when I tell people, I said, listen, if you're not going to put that work into it, don't expect to see success. It's not, it's not, this is not the microwave generation. They want things instantly given to them yep. because they're there. No, you got to work hard at it. You know, <laughs> like I've, I've been watching um, um, Devin Haney, you know, like the, the, the lightweight guys, right. Yeah. And I'm watching these guys yeah. and I'm like, you know, who, who just fought them? Tank, um, tank. Against yeah. Javante yeah, Davis. Yeah. yeah. And I'm just like, these guys are skilled. Oh my God. Like they're crazy. But then I'm like, they're not going to the club. They, they have a social life, but their social life's at the gym. They're putting yeah. in that work. Like their circle is towards that. It's not go to the club, check out the girls, go to the strip club, go to the, and yes, of course there's times for the celebration, the fun. But at the end of the day, if you want to be like yourself, a world champion, a title holder, hold care on that belt, in any aspect of your life, you can't put yourself with everybody else that's going to be doing whatever else they're doing. Um, do you want to talk about your circle when you were coming up? Who who was the guys that you were like, all right, did you see them dropping out? Did you see them, you know, you're doing that one extra mile and they're fading away or were everybody the hard chargers? <laughs> Well, no, there, there. I mean, you know, there are a lot of guys that I watched. Like I said, you know, uh, on the Ontario team, you know, the national team, and these guys were, you know, they're they're great amateurs. They were champions. Like a lot of these guys were Canadian champions. Myself, I was always because I came back uh, in the boxing. I quit in eight, 1984. I came back in 1988 to fight. Uh, no, no. So I quit in '88. I came back in '92. Mm. I messed my years up. Okay, so I quit in '84. Okay. I came back in 88 to train for the 92 Olympics. Oh, beautiful. So, because I watched my friends at the 88 Olympics in Seoul, mm -hmm. Korea, and I knew I could have been there with those guys. So I said, okay, I'm going to come back out of retirement, and I'm going to be at the 92 Olympics. 
So getting ready for the 92 Olympics, Barcelona, Spain, I was fighting the champion, the then champion, Mark Leduc, every time. And so 89, 90, 91, 92, it was always me and him. I beat wow. everybody else. I ended up coming to fight him at the end, I was on top of the pole there. Um, I, I kept losing to him. I lost to him six times in a row uh, heading into the 92 Olympic trials. Now, some would say in baseball, they say strike one, strike two, strike three, you're out. Yep. I I kept losing to this guy six times. And people are like, wow. what, what's wrong with this guy? You know, he, he won't give up. Well, no, I'm not giving up because I knew that some of those fights I was winning, I was good enough and I was mm. winning, but I kept losing to the judges politically. Wow. So now the seventh time, the seventh time in 1992 getting ready for the Olympic trials, I fought him and I beat him that seventh time. And I was, I was elated. I was happy. I was like, wow, I get to go to the Olympics. I get to go to the Olympics. That's wild. Well, they end up grooming this guy for the four, last four years. So they told me the rules had changed. They said I had to beat him twice in order to go to the Olympics. Well, they wanted him to go. Yeah. They'd groomed him for it, right? Because the last four years, right? 89, 99, 192, they were grooming him. He was, he was traveling all over the world getting ready to represent Canada. And I just happened mm-hmm. to beat him that time. So the computer scoring system had come into play. So they told me mm. that I had to beat him a second time. Like when I won, I was like, wow, this is unreal. I can't <laughs> believe I just did it. And then now they said, after I won, they said, now the challenger has to be the champion twice in order to go to the Olympics, Olympic trials. And I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> so, you know, Shy. I what came back over there. I, I went went back at it, fought again the second day, the next day right away, and I, I lost the decision to him. So he ended up going to the Olympics, and he came back um, from the Olympics with a silver medal. Now, you know, I, you know I was watching closely. I was watching closely. <laughs> okay. It's like, I could have. So, yeah. Well, well, check this out. So here's what happened. So he came up with a silver medal. And they the, the TV and the news, they came to me and they said, listen, Fitz, we see Mark LeDuc came back with a silver medal. What do you think of that? And I said, well, if Canada is happy with a silver medal, then I'm happy for Canada. Mm. That was it. Wow. Wow. Because I know. I know. <laughs> I'm going to get that. They, so, yeah. You got to take me back. Like, the first time you lose, it's a fight. Okay. Second time you lose against him. Okay, it's a little harder to take. Third yeah. time, the fourth time, the fifth time. What was your mindset the third, the fourth, the fifth, and even the sixth time? What was your mindset like? Was it like, oh, man, it was the judges. Oh, it was this. Was it all, everybody else? Or was it like, I need to get better. I need to prove. I, w- what was your mindset? Well, like, really, like I, knew, I knew some of those fights that I felt I was winning. Like even, you know, I'm looking at, you know, the punches I'm throwing, I'm going back and watching these fights. I'm like, you know what? I'm doing well. I'm winning these fights, you know, but I'm losing to the judges. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to keep working at it until they give it to me because I'm not, I'm not going anywhere. It's like when you go for a job interview, you know, they say, okay, you're not good enough. Then, right? They turn you away. Then you're gone. Well, they come back. Some people come back the next day, right? Come back or a week later, say, come back. I want to try for the job again. They see, I wasn't, I wasn't taking no for an answer. I was going to fight until I got what was mine. And, uh, you know, like I said, by the grace of God, that seventh time I finally got through and I did that. And then I stayed on and I became, I became national champion, uh, uh, in that for the 93 national champion. And then I just had decided to turn pro after that. Cause there were too much were politics. Like, uh, that's what's true. W- were you, uh, like a hardcore celebrator after like, what, regardless of whatever fight that you were in, when you won that fight, were you like that guy two weeks off, a month off, I'm just going to celebrate and have a good time? Or were you like a day and then back in the ring, back on the ropes, back hitting the pads? What was your what was your mindset after the win? Yeah, no, no. My uh, See, I was always I was always in great shape, um, you know, uh, always ready to go. So I never I, never, I wasn't one of those guys who was hard on my body, who had to go and party and had to celebrate mm-hmm. and whatnot. You know, once I mean I, I'm I'm and even like even still today when it comes down to things I mean if I see myself I'm, I'm like okay you know what I need to hit the road I need to go do some running I need to go train or something right uh, but yeah I mean I was always like that way I just I tried to stay I stayed focused 
and dedicated to what I was doing. So I didn't really have to worry about, you know, a lot of these fighters are taking like two, three weeks trying to get themselves back in shape and yeah. this, that, and the other. I'm like, you know what? That's hard on the body. I said, why do that? If you, if you keep, if you maintain yeah. something the whole time, you ain't got to worry about trying to get back in shape or trying to do the trying to do that. That's true. You, know, you don't have to get yeah. ready if you stay ready, right? Yeah, exactly. That's yeah, true. Like I, when, I, when I was wrestling, we did a lot of water cutting and we did a lot of stuff and we've seen guys that they just couldn't handle it. Like in those last like hours, like you you're you got the the bags on, the sweatsuit on, and you're just running in place, and you're you know in wrestling you're doing your shots and whatnot, and in the sauna and it was just terrible. But you've seen guys like the guys that went to the um, officer, like the state or uh, provincial level, or the guys that went to yeah. the national level. They were going and going. Their sh- their first shot and their seventh shot and. Their- you know, 800th shot was all the same, full intensity, everything they had. But then they had the other guys that were, you know, just going through the motions, you know, doing, yeah. it's like, yeah, I'm going to get there. <laughs> At the end, do they get there? Oh, nope. they, they, <laughs> yeah. they didn't get there. You know, and, and for yeah. myself, I was that guy. I was that guy. I was like the girls, man. Like I had a good body. You know, I had some tattoos, a little rebel back then. And I was like, hey, come on, you know, I'm doing all right. And then you get, hey, I'm going, I think we're going to Thunder Bay for Ontario's. Yeah. So, hey, I'm traveling, guys. Like, hey, oh, my God, you're traveling. That's so cool. You're so amazing. And I'm just like, yeah. The coach was like, hey, get back in there. Yeah, them girls are paying attention to me. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't be in there with a sign of sweaty guys and stuff. How do you find to push through those last, you know, like you, you said, you're pretty much always in, in shape and always right around your weight. But those yeah. last days, right up before, like the end of fight camp, when the body's is getting tired, but you're dialing it down a bit. How did you keep that focus? Like, even, yeah, how'd you keep that focus? I just try to let myself know how bad I really want to be, you know, to be champion or how bad I want to win. Right. And mm. when I, when I oftentimes I would think back to all the hard work I put in there, all the sacrifices that I made trying to get there. I mean, you know, I thought, I thought like I always, I was always like, okay, you know, my friend Steven, Mark and those guys, they're all partying now. They're all with the girls. They're all watching movies and stuff. And here I am slugging away at it. And I thought, you know what, this is something I got to do now while I'm young, while, while my body can take it and do it, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I'll have lots of time after later on in life to party, you know, to chase women, to celebrate, whatever. But I said, I got to do these things now. And that's the thing. That's where I got the discipline and focus from, you mm-hmm. know, through sport, because when it comes to a lot of things, you have to dedicate and then sacrifice certain things in order to get to, the, to where you want to go at a certain point, because yep. there's only a window of opportunity and that window only stays open so long. And if you don't get through that window, so, if you don't get through that window, it's going to close on you. you know? It's true, especially in sports. Like you have a, literally a finite time. Like we could talk about life. We we only have 80 years to live, 90 years to live. That's damn near the whole, your whole life. You have your whole life. Yeah. That's a long yeah. time, God willing. But in sports and athletics, it's not as, it's not so. You have like 25 like to get in and then maybe even earlier before that to like really put your name out there. You should have a name. I, th- I, I don't know if you agree, but 25, you should have like somebody should know you right at 25. Yeah. And um, like, but if you don't basketball, football, baseball, hockey, it doesn't matter. Boxing, MMA, it doesn't matter. If you don't get in, like you said, in like high school or those earlier years, your body is going to take a toll because it's physical, right? It's, you you don't have that longevity of ever. (laughs) No, no. (laughs) You know, I mean, some people may think so and then try to fool themselves, but you know what? At the end of the day, you know what? There's always some young lion that's sitting there waiting to pounce on you. (laughs) Right. (laughs) And, and in the, in the fight game, it's not just like, Ooh, it's a 30 second, you know, I'm going to tackle you and you're done. No, no, no. This is like, could be a 12 round fight that you're just getting punished because this young buck is ready 
and he sees you and he sees your belt or he sees your status in the in the in the, in the promotion and saying i'm gonna take this guy out and mm-hmm. you everybody's that one that young guy at one point but then <laughs> we start to drift off and you know pennies <laughs> and donuts pretend to be really good <laughs> but i'm just saying <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know yeah. dunkin donuts just popped up so you know just <laughs> <laughs> yeah Th- that uh, starts to be more intriguing no, we, you know yeah well, no, we all we all gotta know we're all we're all gonna be there at one time right i mean we're all that young guy we're you know at one point then we're all gonna be end up being that old guy right that somebody mm-hmm. wants to target somebody likes how good your record is how what your resume looks like and they want to knock you off that totem pole that's right that's why you know when you're champion you know, my trainer, my trainer taught me when, you, when you're champion, you got to always be ready because somebody is always looking to knock you off that pole, to take that title from you. So, you know, I mean, when you win the title, that's one thing. Yeah. But keeping it, oh, that's, that's a whole nother story. Most definitely. Yeah. Whole nother story. When I, when I, like I said, I was with Grand Brothers and they, they were like, hey, you know, you, you can fight, you know, you can you can go. I've, I've realized it doesn't matter what somebody else thinks. It doesn't matter, right? I looked at myself and I'm like, I'm 240 pounds at the time when they were saying that. You see these guys in the ring at 240? I'm five. I'm five eleven. 240. These guys are like, you know, six one, six two. These guys are Klitschko's and stuff. Like these are big boys. <laughs> like the length is my leg. And then I, I, in my head, I was like, man, I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do this. They kept saying, you can, you can. It doesn't matter until you believe it, right? And it, and it and it goes back to what you were saying. When you put that time in, that dedication in, you, it's you're like brainwashing yourself in a sense. Like I put that time in, I put that dedication, yeah. in. I put that into. So like, of course I can do this. You know what I mean? Did you ever get to a <laughs> point in your career that you're like, I don't know, like this guy, he's a, he's he's a bad boy, or was it always like? Yeah, I'm a champ, bro. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I mean, yeah, most, I mean, you know, every time I think, I think, I don't think that there was a fight I stepped into, you know, <clears throat> thinking that I'm going to get beat. You know, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter who it was or what the situation was. Mm. Every, every, pretty much every fight I stepped into that ring, I went in there to win. That's it. I know that I had a chance to win because I think once you, once you use that, like, mindset is everything. Once you go in there, Thinking you're going to get beat or you're going to, you're going in there knowing you're going to lose, you've already set the tone of the fight. You got to mm-hmm. go in there knowing that you can that you can win that fight, that you're going to give it your all, and I with hope it is possible. True. With hope it is possible. You can do it if you believe in yourself. You know, and there you know there have been some fights where you know I was supposed to lose. I was set up. I was supposed to lose, but I ended up winning because. I persevered through everything. I came back from adversity, from getting knocked down, came back, and uh, I took it to my opponent. He he thought, okay, he, he had not me happened. beat, yeah. but not happening, not happening because I, I'm here. I'm here to win this fight. <laughs> you know, Dude, t- talk to you about that real quick, because like you know, I've I never fought in the ring. I would, unfortunately I fought in the streets, and I was a bouncer for many years, so I've definitely fought once or twice, and um, <laughs> getting hit is not a game and it's not something that people should play lightly with it's a serious serious thing one brain damage obviously but in the street it's you you get hit and then you hit the floor which is concrete not a play not a joke joke. but talk to us about actually getting hit like i'm like i'm i'm about to go out but then still coming back what what was that feeling because i've been rocked and boy it's not a good feeling. Yeah. No, I mean, <clears throat> you know, when you when you get hit, like I mean, you know, the the adrenaline's flowing, right? So most times I you know, people will say, Well, wow, wow, does that hurt when you get hit? And you're like, Well, no, not really. Like, what? How can it not hurt? And then, you know, it's I mean the adrenaline's flowing. You know you're in there, you know you're in there to get hit. Mm-hmm. You're prepared. The adrenaline's flowing. So with the adrenaline going takeover, like you're just going through whatever it is to get where you gotta go. Now and there have been times where I've been rocked and like I'm, I'm seeing stars and I'm just like, wow. You know, I remember one time I got hit, boom, I went down, you know, and then 
just somehow referee started counting and I, I got back off to my feet. I got back off to my feet and I'm standing there and my hands are up and I'm just like this. I'm like, okay, got you. I'm here and the referee's counting, you know, four, five, six. And then and then he goes, Are you okay? And I go, I go like this. My hands are like this. I'm going, Yeah, I'm okay. And he waves off the fight. And I'm going, I'm like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Uh, he goes, No, I'm like, but my hands are up. I'm talking. I'm asking you, you know, but wow. you know, so you know, those are the fights that are that are hard to to take. Now, mind you, you know, I guess maybe maybe my consciousness uh brought me to have my hands up to be able to say, you know, just what are you doing? What are you doing? Through the reps, right? You know, just over and over again. Just I, I'm up. Yeah. Right. So, you know, but you know, I I guess those fights in, in retrospect when I look back, I said, okay, you know, fine, they're what they are. They they may have saved me to fight fight in another day. Mm-hmm. You know, and I just go on from there, right? Because you know, some things you have no control over. That, that's the truth. No like, when you're saying you don't really feel it, it's it's the truth, man. Like like I, I felt it when I when I hit the ground. I felt that. I promise you. I, I, felt, I felt that. <laughs> and yeah. the actual blows, like the actual hits, you don't really feel. Right? Like no. like I'd come out and like, you know, I got bottled and stuff. And like yeah. I, I didn't really know. Right. And like I felt this warm stuff and I was like, oh, oh. and then it was on, of course. <laughs> and, and, but you don't really feel it. And like people will look and say, oh, my gosh, like what's happening? But you don't feel it. And then you see a guy like any guy that's dominating a, a fight, you know, the more classics as Tyson's and like all these all these power, power shots. Oh, my God. How is this guy taking it? How is he taking it out? You don't feel it. Your body feels no. it afterwards. <laughs> Do you feel it afterwards? Yeah. In the morning, you're like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it's, it's yeah. Like, so um, how long did you, um, from when you went pro to finishing and retiring, what was your span of time in there, in the ring? Um, so I turned pro January 1993, and I fought. Uh, I fought until 2005. I retired in I retired in 2005. I came back from a seven year layoff and I fought again in 2012. Mm. And then uh, I won the championship. I won the National Boxing Authority Canadian Midway title um, in 2013, which made me the oldest Canadian champion succeeding George Chevalo. Um So that was that was historic there. And because uh, when I when I came back for the fight in 2013, people were saying, "Well, you've been off for seven years. You know, um, you'll be fighting guys who are young, younger than you. You know, da da da." I'm, I'm like, you know what? I've always I always maintained that. I always said to myself, "I know I can be the best in this country in my 40s." And the opportunity came, and I said, "You know what? I'm gonna, take I'm gonna do it." And uh, you know, I was uh, 45. I fought a guy. For the title, the guy was um, 27, I believe. No, no, he was 29. I was going after the 27-year-old after I kept going down. I'm going to get you, too. (laughs) 20s, 30s, 40s. I'm like, what am I? Everybody. But you know what? It was there. You know, I, I, but I was, I was able to pull through and I won the title. I became a three-division pro champ. I was a champion of welterweight. Uh, super welterweight and middleweight, three division pro champ, um, and it's something that you know I'll say in this in this region mm. that you know they're they're not gonna see because when I retired in two thousand and two thousand and five, yeah. the first time I said I said that this city this city is not gonna see another fighter like myself come along in the next fifty years, and two thousand and five that was what fifteen years ago. Mm. Another 35 years, I'm going to come out and say, what did I tell you guys? Now, when I say that, keep in mind what I'm saying. I'm a, I'm a three-division pro champ, mm-hmm. not one, two, three. So we've got fighters in the city like Lennox Lewis. He's a one division. You know, Whether you want to say he's from England, can't, whatever. He's one division. I have my brother here. My mm-hmm. brother's one division. We have Chris Johnson. He's one division. We have no two, we have no two divisions. I'm three. Three. Wow. I'm three. Okay. So when I say, you know, another 35 years, I'll come out and say, you know, is there even a two division champ now in the city? 
because I'm three and I told you that you're not going to see another one walking around in this city in this age. Yeah. yeah. You know, I know, I know the fighters that I was with. I know what I went through, and I know what it takes to get there. No. So, so you always had a very um, confident way about yourself, or was that like just like bred into you, if you will? Just like mom, dad was like, yo, you know, you're you're the best, you're the greatest. Was that always a positive affirmations from from your surrounding circle, or was it through time? Um, I think it was more through through time but i mean part of how my dad uh my dad brought me up amongst my brothers um helped separate me from the rest of them mm. and when i say that it's like um so i'm i'm the middle child i got two older brothers two younger brothers mm. so my dad would my dad would put us on this weight bench had to, we had this weight bench where we lift weights and he put my oldest brother so be myself and my two older brothers we'd lift weights together yeah. So my dad would put my, my oldest brother under the weight to push it up bench press. And my oldest brother would get under it and he'd like, and he couldn't do it. So yeah, mm-hmm. he got off. So my next older brother would get under it and he tried to do it too. And he couldn't, he couldn't do it. So then I'd get under the weight and I'd get on another, like, one, two, three. You know, I'd get up. My, my dad, my dad would be like, good job. Good job. So I'm like, yeah. And then I was like, okay. <laughs> if that's you know, so I knew I got praised when I when I succeed when I did something yeah. that others were struggling to do. So I always push myself push him, push him. harder, harder to, to get through, right? For that reason. Yeah. And then I, I adopted that through like, you know, going along through my career. Then even through my boxing career, I, I was and most mostly being self financed, self promoted, self managed through most of my boxing career. Really, huh? Yeah. So you know, so that being said, I was always, I knew I was most of the time by myself having to succeed, go through what I want to do if I want to get it done. Mm. And that's why, uh, you know, um, that's a lot of the stuff that I work through right now. But I mean, I'm trying to bring people on with me now as I'm going further now, because I know I can, I, get, I, can, I can get more done with, with the help of others, most right? Definitely. Because I'm, I get a lot done now yeah. on my own. But I think, I think if these guys or people get on board and help me, okay. how much more? We can get done. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Like, I, yeah. you, you were, you were alone doing most of your stuff, but you still like teams are important, right? Like, you had your sparring partners, you had all these guys that like, you were doing the backdoor deals and like, hey, you know, sign this contract and doing all this, you know, going around. So that must have built confidence. Obviously, going through the ranks to getting to the level that you 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 know finished out at. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's um. I'm, I mean, I remember even one of my contracts that I'd signed uh, was this, this promoter in Toronto, mm. and uh, he said to me he wanted to sign me to a to a one fight deal. Okay. And then, so I looked at the contract. I read the contract, and uh, the contract was was set. He wanted. He was trying to sign me to a year. He just said he, he said he said he wanted to sign me to a one fight deal. Yeah. But it it didn't say one fight is one year. He had written on the contract. Try to hold well, see, I read that contract through. And I was careful reading it. And I saw, I said, hold on a second. This is one year, not one fight. You told me one fight. Oh, it must have been a typo. Uh, one typo. Fight, one year. Hold on a second. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm like, hold on a second. I, I read about this stuff in boxing. I hear about that. You know, the boxers are not that smart. They can't read. They can't. Die. I'm like, hold on a second. No, 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 not not this cat. <laughs> so I'm like, no, you know, you ain't getting me. So, that's, yeah. So that was that. that. That's crazy. So, um, I, I've noticed, um, from following on social media that you um put your hand head into um politics as well. Yeah, I threw my hat into that ring yeah. there. <laughs> it's like you know what, world champion. You know what, why not? I got my own gym, run my own business, but why not do that too? <laughs> <You know? laughs> like, dang, like do, do you have a limit of like, you know what, I'm not going to do this. Like, or is it just like, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do everything I want. <laughs> like, th- th- yeah, that, you know, it, it's, it, it, it's almost one of those things like, you know, hey, if I'm young enough and I got time... I make time. I'll do it. <laughs> you know? 
and, and see, like, it, it goes back I th- it, to me when I when I hear the story. It's like when you came up, you you seen the cops give him back. They didn't have to do that. You know, they, they have a job, they have a career, they put their time in and they didn't have to mess with the kids. But their yeah. heart their heart was there. And um, they put that time in. Like you said, if I have the time, I'll do it. And it, it shows that even yourself now, that you're out of the ring in a sense of competitively still training, still putting your heart still in the ring. But yet, hey, I think this community could be a little bit better. I think I could do it. And then putting your head into that as well. Like that's like, that's, that's wild. And what, what, um, what prompted you to get involved with um, politics in that, in that manner? Uh, well, you know, I was talking, I was talking with some people and, you know, I, I, um, I knew that, you know, I know like a lot of some politicians, like, I mean, a lot of things people say, you know, well, if this, if this politician or this person knew, you know, what we were going through, then they could be able to relate to us. Yeah, yeah. And when you see a lot of politicians, they have no idea what the average person does because they're not, they're not, they're not a most the average person. Mm-hmm. They're up there at a certain level and, you know, they're doing their thing. So they don't know what the homeless goes through or what people who are, are of average, of average living status goes through and what they require. But yet still they're sitting there and they're required to make changes or make adjustments yeah. for the average person when they have no idea what they require. So if you've never been where somebody's been, how do you know where they're going? Facts. You don't. <laughs> right? It's impossible, yeah. So I know myself, you know, having been there and having done lots of work in the community with the unprivileged, at-risk youth, uh, the homeless, mm. you know, I'm amongst the people. I'm amongst the people, walking amongst them, seeing what they do. I know what's required. That's so I said, if I can make a difference, if I can make a positive difference in politics, get involved, yeah. then so be it. And, and I think that's that's really what politics comes down to. It's it's the everyday guy that knows the the, the, the heart cries of the community, right? It's not yeah. for these guys that oh, I went to poli sci and you know all I did was politics, 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 politics. Because you, you started here with everybody. But then you start drifting off and just got into your own little world in the political world, political realm that doesn't know anything really at what's hard, happened in the city. But like you said, you've done so many things in the community through your, your fighting career. Can you can you name off a couple of things that you've done and like or what you still do for the community? Because I, I know we've talked and I know you do some a lot of stuff. Yeah, well, I don't know if we have enough time in this video, but let me <laughs> let me stick to some of the some of the newer stuff, the some sure. of the fresher stuff. I mean, you know, while one I've been running my boxing, my own boxing academy here, uh, working with youth for eight, eighteen years now. I run a I run a summer camp with a world champ. Uh, been doing that for um, about seven, actually eight years now. Oh, wow. Summer camp with a world champ, so. That's giving underprivileged and at-risk youth a chance to go to summer for a full week of summer camp. Usually, we we take kids from big brothers and big sisters, or family and children services, and we give them a free week of summer camp. So I usually I take like six kids for me. So there's organizations. That's what we did in the past. Uh, we're changing that up now, and now we're taking kids from some of the schools. Uh, so the teachers, the principal will send some kids who are underprivileged who could use a free week of summer camp and we take those kids from there from the schools um i've got my own nonprofit. it's called whip it with hope it's possible youth in transition so my whip it uh we have a ride so we just had a virtual ride about a uh, month and a half ago okay we're virtual with a virtual ride we raised enough money to send two underprivileged kids to summer camp next year nice now I said I thought to myself, okay, you know, as a virtual ride, we might have been, might not be able to raise a lot of money, but I thought, you know what? One of my friends said, listen, if you, if you can send two kids to camp, you made a difference in the lives of two kids. Right. That's a big thing. For sure. So you know, we raised enough money to send two kids to camp. So I said, okay, great, we can make a difference in the lives of two kids. You know, um, I do the food bank every year, every Christmas. Uh, me and my gym members, we get together, we raise food for the food bank. Wow. I do uh, I do donate blood to the blood bank. I usually put together Team Whip and we go to uh, the blood bank and we donate blood there because people with cancer, people who have surgeries, all this sort of stuff, you know, car accidents, they need blood. 
and they need it bad. They're in, in dire need of blood right now. So I usually put together a team whip and we go we go off to the blood bank and donate blood. This year I put together a new initiative, which is um collecting hats, uh gloves and socks for the homeless. Okay. So this uh this year we're collecting hat socks and mints for the homeless in the Waterloo region because mm. You know, uh, you know, we, we take things for granted in life. You know, we have, a lot of us have things that we don't think about others. And I'm like, you know what, there's so many people out there who don't have simple things as hats, socks, and mitts to keep themselves warm. You know, they're on the streets. And so, yeah, so my gym's getting together and we're going to work collecting for those those people in the water region to make a difference. Like, what what was it, what is it that, that was like, I'm not done yet? Like I collected belts, three categories. Get throwing my hand into politics. Hey, you know what? Community got you guys. Blood drive. Let's do that. Kiss the camp. Let's do. Like what? 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 Put it into. What gave you that heart to really help the community? Because there's there's helping the community in the sense of oh, at the grocery store I drop a can in the box every Christmas. There's a oh I give to World Vision and you know or I see a homeless guy and I drop a dollar. There's that right. But yeah. then there's, well, then there's fits the whip, <laughs> and it's a whole different level. It's a whole different ball game. What, w- why? I, you know what? I, I you know, I, I just uh, like somebody asked me that before too, and I, I just, I, I don't have the, I don't have the right answer. But I just like for me, I know God has blessed me in such a way to, to do the things that I have in the boxing ring, and to use my celebrity status. And that's why, like, even since I've been back, you know, last eight years, I've been visiting kids in the hospital with cancer. You know, one of my friends, uh, one of my old high school friends, his son had cancer. Uh, he can, he had cancer, about he got about four years ago. And he, you know, he, he calls me up and says, hey, Fitz, you know what? Uh, my boy, I told my boy, you're a professional boxing champion. He'd like to meet you. I said, no problem. Within a week, I was, you know, dropped my stuff. Two, three days later, went down to see the kid in the hospital, brought my belts down there. You know, you know, when I see these kids, you know, with cancer, you know, they'd like to meet a champion or if I can make a difference, help use my celebrity status to help um, get them a, a donation, get a, get a donate donation for the kidney or whatever they need. You know, I, I do that because I know that um, that's what I was blessed. Uh, God blessed me to do what I, what I have done in my career. And when I look at all these kids, I say, my son is healthy. My son is fine. Why can't I help another kid? Jeez. You know, it's about making a difference. Uh, there's, I find there's there's champions that go after the money, the money, the money, the money, and that hey, power to you. And then there's champions that go after hearts and minds and in communities, and their lame is in that community long after with a deeper root than they're physically here. You know, we we can always yeah. talk about the, oh, look at this guy, look at his record. Oh my God, he's so amazing. He has a private jet, he has a this and he has a lab. But then you sit down with the community, oh, what, so what's up? Oh yeah, you know, he's a good boxer, good stuff. But then there's those other guys. And those other people, you sit down at the barbershop, you sit down at the, at the Timmy's, you sit down at the, whatever and maybe you have to bar at the local gyms you're like what do you think about this guy and they don't shut up because that person has made such an impact on their life on the community or those that they know that that's the real champion in my mind what do you think yeah you know what i mean i you know for me like i said i know what i've done in the boxing ring you know what it's there it's done it's there but you know i think that as I continually, because I, you know, I've talked to some, some mothers, some parents who have kids with cancer and they say, they say, wow, you know, great job you did. Because, you know, when, when my, my son had cancer, my kid had cancer, they're talking about you uh, in the cancer hospital, you know? And I'm like, what? They say, yeah, they're talking about you, but what you did for this kid over here and what you did, how you came and visited this one. And I'm like, wow, I didn't even know that, you know, but that's fine. I, I like to do it because, like I said, I, I want to make a difference. I want to do – I think part of me is, is the kind of guy who likes to do what others can't do, hmm. you know, or what – or or who a guy who wants to do what others won't do. They can, but yeah. they won't do it because 
it's not lying in their pocket or they're not getting praise for it. They're not getting, you know, the accolades, right? And and that's fine. Like for me, like I said, I know I, I think, you know, at the end of the day in my city, they're gonna say, Oh man, that fits the whip. Ah. He was just a guy who kept going to he he was just doing so much in the community. He's doing stuff for the blood bank, for the food bank, and he's doing this and he's doing that. But you know what? At the end of the day, they're gonna remember my name. Whether they talk about me because I did so much, and oh, that was such a bad thing, and I was just always doing this, and you know, nobody could yeah, that's don't okay. Help out so many people, don't do that. Yeah. You know what? That's okay. At the end of the day, they're gonna remember my name. They're still whether they want to talk good about me or bad about all the stuff that I'm doing, that's okay. That's okay. No, because at the end of the day, it's 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 us, right? It's what we have to look at ourselves in the mirror. What we gotta 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 love, you know. I heard a gentleman speak the other day, and he was saying, um, "It's not." I, I think I told you, it's not living a not, life. Life is not just living, but it's living fully, right? right. Fully, right? It's 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 loving every moment but putting everything into every moment right like you said hey you know if i have the time and if i have the energy i'm gonna go do it and i'm sure you know by talking to you it's not gonna be just a ragtag oh you know i put my name on it you're gonna put your all in right and that is that's definitely something we should all aspire to do you know regardless of what you know we get knocks in physical with knocks in world our job or relationships but just keep on pushing forward because at the end of the day nobody's going to do it for us <laughs> like no. nobody won your belt for you nobody put in that road work for you nobody you know you know hit the mitts for you nobody they held it mm-hmm. they may have cheered you on they may have said good job or whatever but nobody did it for you you know no yeah no and and, and you know what i mean it's you know it's like um it's like one of my guys um you know, uh, Damon for the Ontario Boxing Hall of Fame, he'll say, you know, he says, listen, if you don't let the people know what you did, nobody's going to write this, write your story for you. You got to write your story yourself, you know? Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, that's it. You know, and, you know, it's like, like, uh, Muhammad Ali. I got one of his shirts. I actually want to, I want to wear it. Cause I do, I do a Facebook live every, every Sunday at 7 PM. Okay. But if, it, if it's not this Sunday, but next Sunday, I want to wear a shirt because the shirt says, it's not bragging if it's the truth. It's the truth, man. So, when, so, so when I sit there and say that, you know, that I'm a three division pro champ, and I don't know that in this lifetime, you know, you guys around here are going to see another three division pro champ walking around in the city. Mm. I'll tell you, it ain't bragging if it's the truth. Facts. That's the truth. And and it's not like you're you're rubbing in people's face. You're just like, hey, this is what I did. Yeah. Uh, how about you? you? Yeah, that's it. Just, that's what I did. It's my life. It's my story. It's what I did. Yeah, man. Yeah. Hey, um, so two things I, I'd like to get you to do is just name off like um, where we can um, find you. You said you do um, uh, Facebook Live every every um, week. You know, where, where can we, you know, see you, you know, spend time with you, you know, talk with you? Where do you spend your time on social? Um, yeah, well, you can find me on, on um, Facebook Live from... But uh, that's so so yeah, on Fitzroy Vanderpool, but there's there's two on there. So it's not the not the political one, not the NDP one. That's not yeah. the one that I use. Um Huh? Are you on Instagram more? Yeah, I'm I'm on Instagram, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I fit I Fitzroy the Whip. Fitzroy Whip. For I'm sure, for my sure. Instagram handle. You know. Sounds good. Sounds mm-hmm. good. And then two two last things. One, what would be one thing that you would tell tell the viewers to that they can overcome their storm? The people that are in it right now, that are in the tough times, that are in the you know the they, they don't want to continue. They they just like all right, I'm throwing in the towel. What would you tell them? That one thing, like this is what I did. I would tell them not not to give up because I mean you know um, giving up is easy. Anybody can give up. You know, it's that person who, who wants something bad enough that will do whatever it takes to get through it is going to be the one who's successful. I mean, we can all give up along the way because times get tough and they often do. And we all have the option to either give up or keep going. You know, it's like Thomas Edison and the light bulb. You know, Thomas Edison, he failed with light bulb. He failed, you know, hundreds of times trying to make the light bulb. But finally, the 101 time, 
you know, boom, the light bulb was made. True. You know, so you can't give up because all these guys who are successful have failed many times before, have wanted to give up, but Six they times. kept on going. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But they kept on going and they found a success. So you can't give up. You have to hold on, hold on to hope and know that with hope, it's possible. Hmm. With hope, it's possible. Man, that's beautiful. And the last thing here is, you able to look in the camera and say, hey, you know, state your name and say, I am a victor. Hey, my name is Fitz the Whip Vanderpool, six-time professional champion, three-division pro champ, and I am a victim. Victor, Victor. Victor. <laughs> Ah, Victoria. Yeah. <laughs> hey, brother, man. Thank you so much. Thank you so so much, man. That's, like we hear we hear stories about Americans all the time, and it's it's good, you know, it's inspiring. But I'm a Canadian. <laughs> I love this country. Yeah, <laughs> I want to hear about us. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I have no problems. You know, you know, shouting out the guys in the states, and they're doing a great job. But man. We got to promote ourselves, you know. We got to gift ourselves up. We got amazing champions from the past and the present. The guys are coming up now, and in all yes. walks of life. And yeah, man, I I love I love hearing stories from you know guys from the whole country here. Yeah, I know it's great because we do we do have a lot, and I think that's what we we fail to do. We don't uh, usually talk and share the success stories of our own Canadian people. Yeah. You know, we're always getting stuff from from the states, and you're right. There are a lot of great success stories right here in Canada. Hey, amongst I, us, I, I, I love the fact that we, as Canadians, we're very humble, but skill wise, is bar none, right? Like if you put us, like we're amazing athletes, you know, teachers, like we're amazing, but we're not mm -hmm. so brash like the states. We're not so out there that oh, it's Canada. Home of the beavers. It's okay. <laughs> you know, they're, they're harmless, man. What? Yeah. We, we've been at war with ISIS for like years now. Nobody's done anything here because we're amazing. Everybody loves us. Right. Right. Like even our enemies still love us. It's, it's, it's <laughs> like, come on, man. <laughs> you know, and man, yeah. again, again, thank you so much. I know you got, you got a lot of stuff to do, brother. But um, if you can, um, send me the, the, the charities that you have. So we can tag it down below. So if anybody wants a sponsor, we can um, set them oh. up for that. Nice, nice. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Right, Appreciate brother. it. No problem. Hey, again, thank you for your time, brother. Okay, thanks a lot, Bryce. Appreciate it, man. For One sure. love. Have a good one. Peace. Peace.